everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Phone Dog Live, the vodcast. I'm the host. I'm your host, I guess. I'm the host, Sydney from Phone Dog. And uh, we're going to be talking about stuff this week. Yeah, um, it's going to be some fun stuff, mostly about mobile technology. Coincidentally, I decided to, to do that this week. Um, iPad, smaller, smaller iPad rumors again, uh, more iPhone rumors, again, uh, more Apple lawsuit news, again, and, and some new stuff. We do have some new stuff here. We're going to talk about the Optimus View, and, um, if we get to it, AT&T's new mobile share plans, um, that are coming this August, and so, uh, but I, I wanted to start off with, uh, smaller iPad rumors, which we've heard before, and this one is actually from like last week, so you've probably read it by now. Um, but it's a report from the New York Times, and their sources say that we can expect a smaller iPad that will be significantly, that will cost significantly less than uh, 499 which is the price of the base model of the, of the new iPad. Um, so that's what we heard before, that a smaller iP iPad would be more cost effective, so this line, lines up with that. Um, also, they're saying that the display, it will have a 7.85 inch display, which is a little more specific than we've heard in the past. We've heard like, you know, less than eight inches, between seven and eight inches. We've heard, you know, kind of like these general um, sizes, but now 7.85 inches, that's what the sources are saying, and it will cost significantly less than 499. So the question is, in um, someone, uh, Taylor or Evan, <laughs> I really should write down who writes these articles because they're great. Um, anyway, this question was posed by one of our wonderful writers on Phone Dog. Uh, will Apple kill off the iPad Touch in favor of a smaller iPad? Or a different way to word it, it's, um, do we need the iPod Touch if we have if we're going to have a smaller iPad, or do we need a smaller iPad if we already have the iPod Touch? And um, you know it's kind of reasonable because if you think about it, if it's going to cost significantly less than four ninety nine, um, it'll probably be somewhere around like two fifty to three hundred. I don't think Apple will release a two hundred dollar tablet. Um, that would line up with current market prices, and let's face it, Apple just doesn't do that. So um, I don't think it'd be, it would cost 200. You know, and not just not just because it's Apple, but they do um, their their uh, the, the materials that they use, the build quality is generally better. And I don't think people realize how much that factors into you know the price of a, of a product. So um, I'm sure it will have fantastic build quality, and so. You know, plus maybe like a retina display and other things. So I would say like somewhere between 250 and 300, um, which is the price of the iPod Touch, depending on which model you get. You can get an iPod Touch for like $200. I think that's the base model. Um, but you know, a smaller iPad would only be $50 more. Um, and it's, you know, you kind of wonder like, do I need an iPod Touch or do I need a smaller iPad? Personally, I think there's room for both. I mean, because they're still both very different products. I mean, you think about other seven inch tablets like, um, you know, like the Galaxy, the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 7, the Kindle Fire, you know, they're portable, they're more portable than a 10 inch tablet, uh, or even like, you know, an eight or nine inch tablet. Um, but they're still not as portable as a cell phone, which is basically what the iPod Touch is. It's like the iPhone without the cellular radio. And um, I think there's something to be said about an MP3 player, really not, it's not really an MP3 player, it's it's a connected device, I guess is the best way to call it. I think there's something to be said about a mobile connected device um, that is that mobile, I just said mobile twice, um, that's that portable and, you know, compared to even a tablet, a tablet that has a seven inch display. Um, would it be necessary to have both products? I don't really think so. Um, of course, I think if you have a smartphone, whether it's an iPhone or not, I don't think you need an iPod Touch anyway, because if you have a smartphone, pretty much takes care of everything you would do with an iPod Touch. But if you don't have a smartphone, and you just have like a little feature phone or something, you know, a lot of teenagers, they just have a feature phone or something, and they have an iPod Touch for, 
music, but also if you know they're around a Wi-Fi connection, they can also browse the web and, and download apps and all that. So you know, I think there's a place for that. Um, do I think it's necessary? You know, again, the question again: Do I think it's necessary to have both an iPod Touch and an iPad Mini? Probably not. You know, together for the same person, but I think the market will allow for it because one, let's face it, people are going to buy it, okay? Because it's Apple, and people are going to buy it no matter what. Um, two, it'll still be a great product. It's still going to be a great tablet. And, you know, everyone wants a tablet all of a sudden. And some people don't want a tablet with a 9 or 10 inch display. And some people will want a tablet with a 7 inch display. You know, the fact that it's smaller, I don't really think is going to change. Oh, it's smaller. I don't, I don't need a tablet. You're right. I'll just use my smartphone. Like, it's not going to change people's minds. People want tablets. And that's, that's basically all it comes down to. If it's if it has a 10 inch display, a seven inch display, eight inch display, you know, whatever it is, people want tablets and this is just gonna be another tablet option. Um, I don't think it means like, oh, well, we don't need iPod touches anymore. I think, no, I mean, people, there's some people who would love to have an iPod touch and for that, it, the portability will be great. It'll be a lot easier to carry around if you're going to school or if you're going on a jog or something, you wanna just listen to music or, you know, whatever. I think there's some usage scenarios where an iPod touch is very practical. And then scenarios where a tablet, you know, whatever size it is, is also very useful. So um, I don't really think it's necessary to, you know, I've heard a lot of people joke about this. They're like, oh, I already have an iPod mini. It's called an iPod touch or, or an iPad mini. They're like, it's called an iPod touch or, or an iPhone. And I mean, yeah, I know it's similar. And I think the joke is basically the fact that iOS looks the same across all devices, whereas, you know, Android, it looks different. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, if it gets old to you, then fine, you know, you don't, you don't like it. But I think the size is really what, what makes the difference. The fact that it looks the same, I don't think changes the fact that the size is just different and a tablet is more useful in certain scenarios than a smartphone or an iPod touch. And then an iPod touch or a smartphone is more useful in some scenarios than a tablet, even if it is seven inches. So, um, you know, I, yeah, I've heard a lot of people kind of talking about it and joking about it. I mean, you know, you guys, let me know what you think. I don't need a tablet. Yeah, well, you know, I don't think, and this is, I've always felt this way from the very first, well, from the time that the iPad came out, which, I mean, even though it wasn't the first tablet, it was the first one that, you know, people actually bought. But, you know, all the way from the first iPad, even whenever I accepted tablets, I was like, all right, this is cool. I could use this. I still don't feel like it's one of those things that you need. Like a smartphone can be very practical and very useful. And I think a lot of people that it would help a lot of people. A computer, you know, basically you need those nowadays. Um, a tablet, I still think it's that kind of thing that's like, well, I have the extra cash. So, why not? I mean, there's, you know, there's, it's kind of fun. It's more for um, entertainment. I know some people do use it for productivity or try to make that argument. I know Apple's commercials, especially, try to make that argument that it can be used for productivity. And to a certain extent, yeah, I, I get it. It's, you know, you do have pages, you have numbers, you have the whole iLife suite, um, plus other apps, like especially education apps. I mean, I understand that's that's an aspect of tablets, um, but I still feel like they're more entertainment devices. So you're right. I don't really think that anybody actually needs a tablet, at least not, you know, like an iPad or an Android tablet. Uh, but still, you know, the fact is we have them and a seven inch iPad, I think would be great. I mean, I, you know, the tablet I have right now, it's a Kindle Fire. One of the reasons why I bought it is because it has a 7-inch display. The price played a big role in it, but also the fact that it has a 7-inch display really really appealed to me. The Nexus 7, 7-inch display, I just... Maybe it's because I have small hands or something, or I'm a girl and so I like cute stuff. I don't know. I think, you know, for a lot of people, um, they like that size for a display and it doesn't matter if they already have a smartphone. If they want a tablet and they want to get a, you know, size that fits them. Um, but it's a rumor for now, so this might not even happen. We might not even see it. But I think there is room in the market for it. And again, like I said, people are going to buy it. Let's just face it. So Apple Apple shouldn't even worry about like, well, I don't know. Will people actually buy this product? I mean, that's not even a question. People are going to buy it, whatever Apple releases. So I don't think they'll have any problem selling these. Um, and iPod Touches, I don't think they'll have any problem selling those either. Um, although they might, I don't know, they might phase iPod Touches out. They haven't updated them 
They haven't updated the iPod Touch in a while, but it doesn't really need any updates, honestly, if you think about it. So, uh, moving on to a couple more Apple rumors here. Uh, we're hearing that... Uh, well, there's a couple of things, actually. One, we're hearing that the next iPhone could use a nano SIM card, uh, which is kind of interesting. I mean, Apple with the iPhone 4, that's when they moved to micro SIMs. Was it 4? I think, yeah, it was the iPhone 4. That's when they moved to micro SIMs. And it was kind of like this new thing that no one really, and even now, there's not a lot of phones with micro SIM cards. Um, there's more, but there's not a lot. And uh, so we're just now kind of getting used to micro SIMs. Now they're going to be moving to nano SIMs. It's just like, no one can, you know, keep up with everything that's changing. But um, so the European carriers are, are, you know, apparently getting ready for that. Now some U.S. carriers are getting ready for a nano SIM card equipped iPhone. Um, but during the where we, you know, got this information or according to Verizon CFO, actually, the SIM card thing was according to BGR. But um, other iPhone news. There's so much that it just it just all runs together. But uh, and other iPhone news, uh, we're still you know we still don't have any official release dates for when the next iPhone is going to come out. I get asked this all the time, um, which I think is so funny because it's just like, how would I know that? I don't know. I mean, I we like we have release dates for some phones. Like there's some we have an idea it's going to be in quarter two, but. But the iPhone, like, we never really know that. We just know it's probably coming by the end of this year. And, um, but anyway, Verizon CFO Fran Shamo, not Shamu, it's Shamo, um, kind of sort of confirmed that the new iPhone will be coming in the fourth quarter. Um, see, the quote is, of course, there's always that rumor mill out there with a new phone coming out there in the fourth quarter, so people may be waiting, talking about, like, why they may not be buying phones right now. So, I mean, you know, I could, are, you know, was that referring to the iPhone or was it referring to some, I mean, chances are it's referring to the iPhone. So probably going to see the iPhone um, in the fourth quarter, which is not surprising. Okay, one more iPhone thing uh, that I want to share with you guys, because this is kind of cool, actually. I think more, more exciting than release dates, I think, is actually seeing the product itself, at least for me. I mean, I think I like seeing leaked leaked pictures of any phone, really. And so um, we got uh, one more leaked picture of the front panel. And honestly, I'm going to tell you guys, it's nothing new, nothing that we haven't seen already. But it kind of just confirms that what we've already seen is probably real. So um, this is supposedly of the new iPhone. This is from the front panel. Uh, you can see it's got black and white. And um, again, larger display. Um, we've heard rumors of about a four inch display and this basically keeps up with that. Uh, the FaceTime camera has been moved, but that's not really a big deal. Um, there is still a physical home button that's kind of been talked about a little bit um, that it might be taken away, but there is still a physical home button. And uh, yeah, a larger display. So, you know, I don't wanna spend too much time on it because I know we hear about these all the time, but it's just, it's fun. We love rumors and we love iPhone rumors. So, um, but let's move on to, this is funny. I wanted to talk about this. Um, okay. So you guys have probably heard about this. Um, first of all, in Germany, um, Apple like a year ago filed a suit against Motorola saying, alleging that the Motorola Zoom was infringing upon the design of the iPad. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was kind of a while ago. And so now we actually have a ruling from the judge. Uh, they said that no, it does not infringe on the design. Um, Motorola had filed like a countersuit, but that was also dismissed. So it's basically Apple's case was dismissed. Motorola's case was dismissed. Um, so, you know, if you're an Android fan, there's a, there's a win for you. But this one is funny. I wanted to talk about this one. Um, so we talked, I think it was last week, about uh, the UK judge that said that um, Galaxy, the Galaxy Tab does not infringe on the design of the Apple iPad, uh, but the quote was that Samsung's tablets are not as cool as Apple's. And it was so funny because it was like the most snarky way to just mo make both companies 
shut up, you know, because, you know, Samsung couldn't really celebrate the ruling because if they did, then that quote would get out. Of course, it got out anyway. But, you know, they're not going to brag about, yeah, our, our tablets aren't as cool as yours. You know, and then, but at the same time, Apple, you know, the, yeah, it's a nice quote for them, but they lost. So they're not really going to be bragging about it either. So it was so funny. But now um, the courts went even further. And I think this is like, whoa. I, I mean, I can't believe that they did this. But um, anyway, this is the ruling. So, okay. The judge has ordered Apple to publish a notice both online and in multiple British newspapers, because it's in Britain, uh, br multiple British newspapers and magazines stating that Samsung's Galaxy Tab does not copy the iPad's design. They also have to, so they have to publish it on online and they have to leave it there for six months, which is pretty harsh, but at the same time effective because he said the ruling was meant to reverse the impression that Samsung was copying the iPad, which happens a lot. You know, the, um, they, companies file these slanderous cases, whether they're true or not. I think most people agree that this case was pretty ridiculous, uh, despite the fact that all tablets look alike. Um, the reasons for that are pretty obvious because it's the most effective and useful design. But, you know, I think most people agreed that this was kind of a ridiculous lawsuit. Apple had some merit, and, and they had some nice points, but overall it was like, okay, Apple, really? You're going to do this? Um, so, and, but see, the thing is, so companies, they file they, they, these slanderous lawsuits, and then it's, it's in the news, and it's like, oh my gosh, this company is horrible. And, but then the, it never, whenever the ruling comes, no one ever talks about it. So the one company, their name gets slandered, but then whenever it's ruled, oh, don't worry, they're, they're okay, they didn't actually do anything wrong, no one hears about it. But with this, Apple filed this lawsuit, it was a slanderous lawsuit, and they lost, but you know, you're know you not going to just get away with losing, you're not going to just get away with that, you're going to have to put it up and tell everybody, you know what, we were wrong, the Galaxy Tab does not infringe on our tablet, um, in whatever they have to say, whether it was, they have to explain it was original design or whoever they have to say it, but it's, it's a lot more effective than just a ruling because rulings can be appealed or they can be buried or hidden or not talked about or twisted or whatever, but this is, it's a lot more effective and honestly, it might, it might be kind of a wake up call for Apple. Um, I doubt any other judge would do this. This judge is like really you know, he said, Galaxy tabs are not as cool as Apple's, which is like, whoa, dude, you've got guts. And so I don't really see any other judge doing this. But just the fact that one judge did, uh, to me, it seemed like it kind of make Apple, you know, take a step back and be like, okay, we really don't want that to happen again. Of course, they're going to have to live with it for six months. Um, so kind of, uh, it was just, it was surprising to me. And I was just, I was like, wow, that judge, he means business. Um, so I, I kind of wonder like what it's going to look like on the site. Are they going to bury it in some, you know, little link at the bottom or are they, do they have to have it on the front page? I don't think they specified if they have to have it on the front page or if they just have to have it somewhere. It'll be kind of interesting or, you know, how will they explain it? Will they, will it be kind of like sarcastic, you know, tongue in cheek, cheek, like, yeah, we were wrong. Their tablets aren't as cool as ours. You got it right. So it kind of be interesting, but um, that was that was pretty funny to me. I you guys know I I'm totally against the Apple lawsuits. Um, I think they make great products when I use a MacBook, um, but the lawsuits I think are are kind of ridiculous and out of hand. So for me personally, I thought this I, thought this, I agreed with the ruling, and I think it's a very effective effective judgment uh, to make them post that. But also just kind of funny. I thought it was humorous. Uh, LG Optimus View caught on camera with Verizon branding. Where did the Ustream window go? There it is. Okay. Uh, with Verizon branding. Here's the picture. And you guys may remember uh, the Optimus View because it's that. That is what it looks like. All you have to do is see it. And you're like, oh, it's that one. It's the phone that has... It's got a large display, I think 5 inches, 5.3 inches, um, but it has an, an aspect ratio of 4.3, which is basically square almost, you know, like the iPad, that's square. Um, I tested another phone a long time ago, the Pantech Pocket, 
that other had a 4-3 aspect ratio. And uh, it's kind of this polarizing design. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I personally think it's great. And, and we've talked about this before, so, you know, if you've heard this discussion, you know, just deal with it. Um, but uh, I personally think the 4-3 aspect ratio is great. Now, the thing is, I can say that because I've actually used one before, and it was a Pantec Pocket. Now, it had a smaller display. I think it was a 4-inch display. Um, but with the 4-3 aspect ratio made it look bigger, made it feel bigger than it really was. A phone that actually has a large display, like, uh, let me, actually, let me see exactly how large this display is. Um, LG Optimus View, yeah, 5 inch, it's a 5 inch display. So with a phone that actually has a large display and then an aspect ratio that is intended to make it look even larger, you know, that might play a role also. But before I used the Pantech Pocket, um, I thought it was stupid. And, I, you know, I agreed with everyone else. I was like, wow, that looks so dumb. Um, it's not, I mean, how is that more useful? I don't, I think that's the stupidest thing ever. It looks ridiculous. It's ugly. I thought the same thing. Um, and then I, I, you know, I was getting the phone for review and I was like, God, why did I have to get this phone? This review is going to suck. Okay. I'm going to hate this phone, but I got it and I used it and I was actually, I was like, wow, this, this is actually very useful. The four, three aspect ratio it actually, you know, like I said, it makes the display feel bigger than it really is because you f you feel like you have more screen real estate, and and I think and I think what makes a difference is that you have more screen real estate in areas that matter, like for you know a picture to be longer or for a web page to be longer. Like, it doesn't really matter because it just means that you see, you know, more at the bottom of the web page or, you know, or, or whatever. It it doesn't really matter that much. But when the picture is wider and you see more of the page, you see more of the picture or, you know, the game is actually bigger and wider, then you're like, wow, this, it feels like a larger display than it is. And so I fell in love with it. I thought it was just extremely useful and extremely practical, as ridiculous as it looked. It was extremely practical. Typing on it was amazing because it was like it was like using a phone in landscape mode, but not quite that wide because that can be sometimes uncomfortable for me. But not having to put it into landscape mode, like I didn't have to rotate it. It was just there, and it was it was very very practical. So you know I can understand with what everyone says about oh this is so stupid it looks ugly, and I have to admit it does look kind of ugly, but. Try to get your hands on I mean, try to have an open mind and use it because I can't even imagine using, you know, the, the Pantech Pocket had a 4-inch display and the 4-3 aspect ratio made it feel bigger. I can't imagine using a phone that actually does have a large display already, a 5-inch display, and then an aspect ratio that makes it feel bigger. I mean, this might be like a decent in between a tablet and a phone, like the phablet thing I know that everyone talks about, which we've had before, like the Galaxy Note, pretty much, you know, kind of in between. And, um, but see, I think it's different. Like for me, the Galaxy Note is too big. It's just, it's gaudy. I've used that word before to, to describe the Galaxy Note. It's just gaudy. It's like a giant freaking brick in your hand. It's way, I don't know, to me, I think it's way too big, but, I can imagine the Optimus view, which would feel wide, you know, it'd feel kind of big, but to me, I think it would be a lot more practical than something like the Galaxy Note with basically a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, I actually really want to use it because I think it's going to be very practical. And if you haven't used a phone like that, um, try to keep an open mind because it might actually surprise you. I think it could actually be very cool. Um, but again, like I said, I don't know, maybe, you know, the aspect ratio, maybe that worked with a four inch display because it was small and it just kind of helped it out a little bit, you know, and then maybe having a phone with a five inch display, maybe it'll be too big. I mean, maybe it'll just be too wide. I don't know. I'll have to, we'll have to wait and find out, which is what we do with a lot of things. But uh, that apparently is coming to Verizon. A uh, quick uh, spec recap, LTE. A uh, 5 inch display with a resolution of 1024 by 768, 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, an 8 megapixel camera uh, with a front facing camera, 32 gigabytes of internal memory, 
a gig of RAM and Android 2.3. Now, this was actually announced a while back. Um, seems like a couple of months ago. So I wonder if when it's if when it's um, released on Verizon, if it'll be updated to Android 4.0 before then. I don't know. But for the time being, it's Android 2.3, uh, along with LG's new UI with your new skin. Now that's one thing that may be a turnoff for me with the Optimus View. Uh, I love you know the hardware design. You know I just talked about that, but. I really, really hate LG's UI. I just do. Um, is the new version is better? It's much better. It's much more toned down, um, more refined. It has more stock elements to it, but uh, still, it's it's things like the dock at the bottom, their keyboard. Um, it's just a couple of little things that really. I just really don't like, and of course everyone's different. I mean, I mean, there's some people that are gonna love it. I love TouchWiz, and there's a ton of people that hate TouchWiz, so um, you know that's gonna be different for everyone. But that's kind of the one turnoff for me uh, from the Optimus view is I really don't like LG's UI. Um, but maybe the new one is it will be better. Actually, if you want to see the new UI, uh, Aaron has an unboxing video of the LG Optimus. What is that? 4x HD, and uh, that has also had ships with LG's new new skin. So if you want to see that and kind of see how LG has refined a little bit, you can watch that unboxing video, and then I'm sure he'll talk more about it uh, in the review. So it's it's more refined, it's more toned down. So I don't know, maybe 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 it'll be better. Um, but I am excited about the Optimus View, and I think that that screen that that display, I know it looks ugly. But I think it's going to be really practical, and so I can't wait to get my hands on one. And then I'll probably hate it, you know, because that would just figure. Uh, AT&T announced some new shared data plans, and everybody hates these. Um, everyone just just hates them. Um, Verizon announced, or yeah, Verizon announced their shared data plans, and everyone went berserk. And so now AT&T has done the same thing. The difference here is that you can choose to use mobile share or you can just use an, an you know existing individual or family plan. Uh, you will not be required to switch to the mobile share plans. Um, I have a feeling that's not going to last. <laughs> I have a feeling that if this is really the way they want it to be, that eventually they are going to force you but at least, you know, for the time being, like with Verizon, as soon as they were announced, it was automatically, you had to upgrade to it whenever you upgraded your phone. But at least with this one, for the time being, you don't have to upgrade. Um, it works basically like Verizon share data, but it's a little bit different. So just in case you're kind of confused, here's a quick recap. Um, and we have a nice little chart. Actually, AT&T provided the chart. So... Um, and it's also organized differently. Like with Verizon, you first started out picking a phone, like a smartphone or a feature phone, and they were like $30 each. This one is a little different, but it still, you know, is the same basic idea. Um, so everyone shares data. Um, as you can see, you it's one gig for $40, four gigs for $70, six gigs for $90, all the way up to 20, 20 gigs. Uh, smartphones cost... For the first, for one gig, it's $40 per month. Or no, 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 excuse me. Smartphones are $40. And then each smartphone, whenever you go up and get more gigs of data, um, this it actually goes down. So each smartphone with four gigs is only $40. And then with six gigs, it's only $35. So that's kind of a new thing. With Verizon's, it's just straight up you know, $30 or $20 or whatever it is. With this one, each time you add a smartphone, or each time you add, you know, more data, the smartphone price actually goes down, which I think is kind of a nice feature. Um, and then as you can see, basic and quick messaging phones are $30, uh, laptops, they're $20, and then tablets are $10. But as you can see, it's it's basically like Verizon's shared data. You pay for a phone, whether it's a smartphone, and then you add the data. It just so happens, like with this one, each smartphone, it goes less as you get more data, but that's not really... I mean, it's kind of a nice feature. If you get a lot of data, you know, you get to pay less for each phone, which I think is is a good move. Um, everyone hates these. I 
you know, I'm kind of, I've talked about this before. I, I'm sometimes very passive about things. Um, maybe too passive. I don't know. Maybe I let people get away with things that they shouldn't. Um, but I don't think I do that. I just think with some things that are like out of my control, I'm just like, I mean, yeah, maybe it sucks. But anyway, so this, you know, I'm not as up in arms about it as some people are, maybe because I'm not on AT&T, so I really don't care. Um, but the one thing that does bother me about it, and it's something that bothered me about AT&T's tier data, is the gaps are too big. And this is something that, you know, when I was thinking about switching, um, you know, going to either, you know, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, and, you know, some of them had the tier data, and it just... The, with AT&T, the gaps are too big. You go from, right now with tiered data, you go from like 512 megabytes to like three gigabytes or something. It's a really, really large gap. And it's like, okay, 512 megabytes is nothing. I mean, it's really nothing, but yet the next step up is like whatever it is, two or three gigs. And I'm just like, well, I don't need that much. I mean, I work at home, so I'm near a Wi-Fi connection mostly all day. So I don't need that much, but I'm going to need more than like a freaking pinch of data. And the gap was too big, you know, whereas with others, it was a little more, a little more even. And it's the same thing with this, you know, you go from, what is it? You go from one gig to four gigs. It's like, couldn't you have a, a two gig increment in there somewhere? Because the difference between one and four is kind of big. I mean, trust me, it's, it's kind of a big deal. And it would be nice to have one little increment in there, not to mention the price. You go from 40 to 70. It's like 40 is okay, and then but then 70, and then maybe I'm only gonna use half of that. Of course, everyone's gonna be sharing, so maybe it's maybe it's not too big of a deal. But it's just yeah, that's my one gripe with these, is that I think the increments are are too the gaps are too big between each increment. Um so anyway, uh, but that's, you know, that's probably a small thing. The fact that they exist, I know, just bothers some people. Um, and we'll have to see, you know, AT&T and, and so is Verizon and now AT&T are, um, are both doing this. And uh, Sprint is still, Sprint never even went to tier data. Sprint is still on, on limit, unlimited. So, um, but you know, now that they're starting to roll out their LTE network, I kind of wonder if that's going to change. If they're now going to go to, you know, maybe share data, maybe just skip tier data altogether, maybe go to share data. Um, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. And then T-Mobile, um, T-Mobile has tiered data, but it's, wait, 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 how does T-Mobile do it? There's just kind of confusing. Everyone's is so different that it's confusing. Yeah, T-Mobile has tiered data. Um, they have the option for unlimited data, if I'm not mistaken, but they do have tiered data. Um, anyway, at least I know I'm on a tiered data plan. Um, but the nice thing is that even if you go over your data, you don't have to pay extra, it just kind of slows down, whereas on AT&T you had to pay extra. They're all really different. So I kind of wonder like, okay, is now that AT&T and Verizon are on shared data, now our Sprint and T-Mobile are going to go to that. It's this new kind of revolution of, of data. And um, we're, I think carriers are just kind of figuring out how to make things work. Because um, if you think about it, tiered plans, they didn't really last that long. Um, they kind of quickly moved from that to this shared data. So kind of wonder if maybe they weren't effective or maybe they're trying to find a middle point. Maybe this will be easier for some people. For some families, um, it'll save money because instead of having to pay for a data plan for, you know, each and every phone, and if you have, you know, if you're in a family and you've got, you know, four or five lines and you're paying, you know, whatever it is, $50, $60 a line, I mean, that can add up really quickly. So now you just, you just pay for each phone and everyone shares the data. So for them, it'll save them a lot of money. Um, for some people who only have a couple of lines, you may end up breaking even or spending more in some cases, I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, it's 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 changing a lot. The mobile technology industry is changing a lot. And so we'll have to we'll have to see. how. That, but I do wish they had smaller gaps like two gigs, I think, would be nice or just somewhere in between there. And I've always had that problem with AT&T. Uh, let's see what other news can we talk about um, hold on, let me get everything situated. Uh, a new Galaxy device is coming August 15th, which is in about a month. This is, oh, I have a missed call. 
uh, this is August, this is July 20, 20th. So in about a month, uh, we're going to see a new Galaxy device. We're not really sure what it's going to be. Samsung just said that it's going to reveal the newest Galaxy device on August 15th. And that was pretty much it. Um, we do, we are expecting some time uh, the Galaxy Note 2 as well as the Galaxy Note 10.1. And I think those are really the only ones that we know about that we haven't seen yet released. The Note 2 is still just rumors. Uh, the Galaxy Note 10.1 uh, was officially introduced but not released or anything. So chances are it's going to be one of those, I'm assuming, unless maybe it's just another phone and they want to have an event about it. Um, but that's going to be August 15th. Um, the Galaxy Note was supposed to debut at IFA, which doesn't start until the end of August. So are they planning on announcing it before then, or was that rumor wrong they just got the month right you know we're not we're not really sure um, but possibly one of those either way it's going to be a note either the note 2 or the note 10.1 it's going to be a big difference because because the note 2 is actually a phone whereas the note 10.1 is obviously a tablet um and it's uh it's funny because i i know someone who just got the galaxy note and so i it's always sucks whenever you buy a phone and then like a month later there's the follow-up, which can be extremely frustrating, um, but some August fifteenth, we're gonna see we're gonna see something from Samsung. Uh, also, uh, Aaron has posted his full review of the Motorola Atrix HD, and uh, this is a pretty awesome phone. You get a chance to look at Motorola's new custom UI, and uh, it it looks a lot more stock. It looks a lot more like stock Android, which is a good thing. Um, so because stock Android looks really good now, like before with, you know, Android 2.3 and 2.1 all before that, Android was like kind of ugly, like it, not ugly, but it was, like everyone said, it kind of looked like a beta operating system. It had great features. It had some of the best features on the market, but the, uh, the design is really where it, where it was, where it was lacking, but with Android 4.0, uh, well, really with Android 3.0, and then it just got better with Android 4.0. Stock Android actually looks really good. Like, you know, I wouldn't mind having a stock Android phone because it actually looks great. It has a great design. And so I think, you know, I think m manufacturers are starting to catch on to that now. Like, oh, okay, we don't really need to pretty up Android too much because it actually looks pretty good on its own. Um, but, you know, they still have to do something to make it look different, to give people a reason to buy their phone over someone else's phone. Um, so you get a chance to look at that, and uh, I, think it, I think it looks pretty good. I'm still not really a fan of Motorola hardware. Um, the Atrix looks great. It has an awesome display. But for some reason, Motorola hardware, um, it's not intentional. It's not like I just refuse to like any hardware from Motorola. It's just every time they come out with a phone, I think it looks ugly. I don't know. It's just their design scheme. It's I've always thought that. Um, even the Razer, like the Motorola, not the Droid Razer, but the original Razer back from like, you know, whatever, 2005 or something. Um, I always thought that phone was ugly. And it was so funny because everyone loved it. Everyone thought it was like the coolest looking phone ever. And it was pretty cool that it was thin, but I always thought that phone was ugly. And, uh, and so it's all the way back. I've never liked Motorola phones, but that's me. You may love the design. And so watch that review. Uh, posted right now, as well as the his review for the HTC One V, which is the um, kind of the small, the little sibling of the One series. You had the One X, which was like the dominant alpha dog, and then you had the uh, the One S, which was like an awesome phone, kind of in the middle, and uh, and then the One V was like was the smaller. It's on Virgin Mobile right now. Uh, I think. Maybe one other carrier, if I'm not mistaken, is supposed to come to Metro PCS. Um, I, could, I could check my notes if I wanted to, if I wanted to just be a little more helpful here. Um, HTC One V. Yeah, it's supposed to come to Metro PCS and US Cellular. It actually might be on US Cellular already, but it's on Virgin Mobile as well. So it is only $200, you know, give or take, depending on which carrier. So if you want a really great phone, but you don't want to pay too much, Check out the One V because that's actually going to be a great option, and that's the news. Um, and so we will now move on to the open Q and A. I know it's a little bit early, 
but uh, I don't want to just ramble just for the sake of taking up time. So, um, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, I'm going to start on Facebook just so, just in case I forget. Have you seen the new Batman movie? I actually just saw that today. Yeah. Um, my husband and I, we were going to see a midnight showing, but we decided not to because um, those are exhausting. I did that once and I will probably never do it again. And uh, so we were like, well, we'll just go to like a really early showing and like in the morning because no one will be there. So we went and saw it at um, 11, but uh, we got there at like nine because we're thinking well just there's probably going to be a line like there won't be as many people but there will probably be a line i mean this is the dark knight rises um so we got there at nine and like no one was there and we're like all right two hours to go so we're just sitting in the theater for like an hour just by ourselves before anyone got there so i saw it and uh it was very good it was it was very good i'm not going to tell you anything because but it was it was pretty good uh, will you buy a Windows a Windows Phone 8 phone? Uh, yes, probably. If I like it, you know. Um, yes, I know. I um, I heard about the news of the uh, the midnight showing in in Colorado. Um, yeah, that was no, that was that was crazy. Um, no, I know. Yeah, I um, I really don't know what to say about that. Actually, I feel bad. I um. Anyway, so I'm just going to wait for someone to ask a question so I don't, um, you guys can leave your condolences in the comments if you want to. I just don't want to get the show all. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Sydney, what was up with the vid Aaron posted yesterday about voting for unboxings? I don't, I don't, it's, I don't think it's really voting. I don't think we're having a poll. I think it was, I think it was just kind of one of those like fun, cool, random videos that we do every once in a while. Sydney, what do you think of the idea of manufacturers releasing a trio of devices every six months so that people won't complain about too many phones? I think it's a great idea. I think it's I think it's great. How was The Dark Knight Rises, and did you cut your hair because of Anne Hathaway? No, I actually don't like Anne Hathaway. I mean, I don't dislike her. I just, I don't know. A lot of people say that she's extremely gorgeous and attractive, and I disagree. I don't think she's ugly, and not that it matters. I'm sure she's a great person. But um, I don't. I don't really like her that much. Um, so no, I, I didn't. I didn't even know she had short hair at one point. I thought she had long hair. Uh, hardware S three or one X? D uh, definitely the HTC one X in terms of hardware, at least. Are the Nexus Seven devices good? Doing good sales wise? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Is there a Sony quad core smartphone coming out? Um. Sony. No, not that I not that I know of. Will the Galaxy Nexus ever come to date to AT and T? At this point, I doubt it. Uh, Sydney, have you heard about the bug in Ice Cream Sandwich since 3.6 on the HTC Vivid? I have not. No, I'm sorry. Sydney is the white version of Anne Hathaway. That's right. I remember that. That was from the Dog Pounds. Good one. Uh, what would you like to see from Windows Phone 8? Um, I would like to see improvements uh, to... Um, uh, push notifications for live tiles. Um, that's kind of a bug in Windows Phone 7, 7.5. Uh, it got better with Windows Phone 7.5 and, and developers also. It's it's kind of on them too, but um, it's just a bug in Windows Phone. They don't always update correctly, like third-party apps. Um, things like the calendar and messaging and email, like that's fine, but third-party apps like Twitter apps, sometimes they don't update correctly on the live tile. So I'd like to see that improved. Um, um, maybe more tile colors. i like to see more tile colors. I like the resizable tile thing. That was probably my biggest thing, and they added that, so I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I'd like to see better cameras. That's on manufacturers, so it's up to them. Um, better hardware overall. Like, like the Nokia Lumia, I think great hardware. I'd love to see more options like that. Um, 
So yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Will you pick up a Windows 8 Surface tablet? I don't know. I mean, I I I want to. Huh, I can talk. Um, I want to try it, and uh, and then if I like it or if the price is right, then I might buy it. But I'm not sure. Do you think Google should create an Android version for the PC? Um, no. I mean, I don't know. If Google wants to create a desktop operating system, then go for it. But I don't think. I think Android is a great mobile operating system. Um. You know, it's like iOS. iOS on a PC was well, basically like a like a tablet. It's basically the iPad. You know, Mac OS 10 on Macs. That's a, really different from iOS. So, Galaxy S3 or iPhone? Uh, well, currently Galaxy S3 versus current iPhone. I'd have to go with the Galaxy S3. How come phones are more expensive than tablets? If they make an if they can make a Nexus 7 that cheap, why not a One X? Um, most tablets are not $200, so the Nexus S, or the Nexus 7, and, like, the Kindle Fire, those are extreme exceptions, um, so, you know, take that into consideration, but why are they more expensive? Um, I really don't know. Cellular radios, yeah, that's probably a big part of it. My 10-year-old brother wants to meet you, we live in Euless. Awesome. Do you think BlackBerry will team up with Android? Uh, I mean, maybe, but at this, no, I think it's too early to be saying that. I think they're still, you know, gung-ho with BlackBerry 10. Do you like what you see from BlackBerry 10? I do. Yeah, I do. Do you have pets? No, I don't. Um, I wish I had a dog, but I live in an apartment, so would have to pay like $500 and it's just not worth it. Update us on your life. Um, nothing really big happening. Actually, big stuff happening, but that's kind of personal stuff. So, um, yeah, I saw a movie, had some Starbucks, got a latte, uh, had some water just now before the show. So... Um, why did, why did they say the One X is better than the Evo 4G LTE? The One X is always ahead on ranking chart. Um, the Evo and the One X are actually extremely similar. So I, well, actually, I'll take that back. Um, the US version, um, the US versions of the One X and the Evo are extremely similar in basically every way, every way. They're pretty much exactly the same phone. Uh, the reason I have it listed higher on my rankings list uh, is because the Evo has a larger battery. Um, that's the only reason why. But uh, the international version of the One X is better than the Evo because it's got a quad-core processor. You're getting married. I'm already married. <laughs> I've been married for two and a half years. Uh, I think you should have kids. Um, I have never wanted kids. Uh, never in my life. I, You know, some women have that inborn thing, like, I don't know, that desire in them to have children. And I've never had that. It's like I search in myself to where that feeling would be, and it's just not there. I just don't want kids. I, I like kids. My kid sister, she's like six. I love her. She is so cute. I, she's just awesome. But I don't want kids of my own. Are you musically talented? These are some really weird questions. <laughs> um, but just for everyone watching, I am just reading the questions, so don't blame me. Um, am I musically talented? I don't know. I am, um, let me see, in fifth grade I played the flute, and then in middle school, sixth through eighth grade, I played the trumpet, which I was okay at. I was better at the flute. I was not very good at the trumpet. Um, I did learn how to play the piano just because I'd always wanted to, and I was like 19 or something, and I had nothing to do with my, I mean, I was doing stuff, but, you know, I had no responsibilities, and so I was like, I'd like to learn how to play the, the piano. And so I bought a book, and um, one of my really good friends, she's like my, I don't know what you call those, like not a mentor, but she's just my, anyway, she had a piano, and so I, I would just use the book, and I learned how to play the piano, but I haven't played it in so long that it, now it's like a foreign language to me, but that was fun. Um, I think this is the third or fourth time we've brought up the kids talk. Really? I hadn't, um, sorry, I, I didn't even realize it. I seen a rumor on a phone website that the new iPhone was going to have a quad-core quad -core processor. Yeah, we've heard that. 
We heard that. You should do more fun and random videos. Okay. Uh, what is that black dot on your printer paper? What? Uh, Sydney, AT&T is willing to replace my Vivid with another phone because of the bug in ICS. They want to replace it with a Windows censored. You think that it is a comparable switch? I already have something. Um, the... I mean, in terms of performance, yeah, it'll probably be the same. Um, but the operating system is, is very, very different. So, I mean, I would try out Windows Phone first and see if you like it. Because it's, it's really different and some people hate it. So I would, I would try to get some hands-on time. Um, I thought that was an Apple logo. I think that's a MacBook. The paper behind you. <sighs> Don't say anything about sports. I didn't say anything about sports. I, had, I hadn't even mentioned it. Did somebody ask me about it? No, I didn't. Um, I already have a Windows phone and I love it. Oh, well, if you love it, then yeah, sure. Go for it. Um, on my printer. No, that's that's a, uh, that's a memory card. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys were flipping out about that. Yeah. You thought it was an Apple logo. Uh, no, it's just, it's printer paper, and then this is the memory card I use for filming, and I just did a dogfight, and so I took the card out of the camera, and I put it in my computer, and then I just took it out and put it right there, because I didn't feel like putting it back in my camera. Yeah, I'll move it. I'll move it for you. Okay. There. Um... The mystery has been solved, yes. Do you think there will be a major or even minor Android update later this year? Yes, definitely. Since Apple has no lawsuits in the seven inch market, Apple is going to sue everyone once they enter the seven inch tablet because they invented it. Nice. What do you have written on your whiteboard? Jeez, you guys are like OCD fanatics. Um, it is tally marks. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, well, anyway, I can't reach back there. Um, but yeah, they're tally marks. I just like leaving stuff up there just to just to mess with your mind. You know, what are they tally marks of? What was I counting? I don't know. Well, I know, but you don't know. Yeah. Do you think the Galaxy S3 will get Jelly Bean? Um, yeah, it better. I didn't mean like, I didn't mean to make you sound like, yeah, of course. I meant it, you know, it be you know what I mean. Do you think that all of the iPhone models are purposeful fakes sent out by Apple? I don't know. I've heard that before, but I don't know. Uh, how come you've never met Aaron in person? He lives in North Carolina or South Carolina or whatever. And um, I just never have. I mean, I'd have to buy a plane ticket and, and go out there and, you know, get a hotel and you know, just to meet somebody. I mean, not that I don't want to meet him in person, but it's like it's kind of a lot of money for just to be like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. All right, see ya, <laughs> you know. Uh, what was the last video game you played? Uh, NBA 2K12, I played that. That's my favorite video game right now. And um, working on my player, I have a point guard. He is freaking amazing. Uh, he averages 27 points, 12 assists, three steals, uh, shoots 55%. Um, he's not a very good rebounder, but he's the best point guard in the league by far. Um, and uh, we're going to win the championship this year. I'm playing for the Knicks in our record. I was trying to beat the Jordan record, the Bulls that you know won 72 games. Um, but then we lost to the Heat because it was so rigged. But anyway, um, so our record right now is like 55 and 10 or something. And... Um, we only have a few more games left, so I'm hoping to not lose a single game and at least tie the record. Um, what was the last non-sporting video game you played? Um, I play The Sims sometimes. I haven't played that one in a while. I guess Tomb Raider was probably the last one. I think it was Tomb Raider Anniversary, I think. 
Yeah, it was Tomb Raider anniversary. When you had the torch on EA10, what did you think of the keyboard? Did you use that more or the on-screen? I uh, definitely use a physical keyboard more than the on-screen keyboard. Um, I thought it was good. I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't like amazing, but I thought it was good. Sydney, are we annoying you? No, I'm, I'm getting paid to do this, so no. I mean, I, and I also enjoy it, obviously, but um, it's a... Uh, that's the awesome thing about my job, is that I get to do things that I enjoy doing, but I get paid to do that. So it's like, I feel like I'm stealing money or something. I'm not, but it's... Um, check Facebook. Considering you have seen the Batman movie, would you say there will be another Batman movie? Uh, well, there's always going to be another one. Somebody's going to make another one. I mean, you know... This isn't going to be the last Batman movie for like, you know, 30, 50, 100 years. There's going to be another one eventually. Will it follow this same, like, follow-up to The Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know if, I don't think Christopher Nolan will do it, but I think he may have a part in it, like he may write it or do something. Um, but yeah, I think there could be another one. I'm just waiting for a question I want to answer. Uh, <laughs> awkward, I know, it's, yeah. Technology that iPhone can think of to compete with S3. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's hard to get a job like you. I would love that, but in the Netherlands where I live, it's so freaking hard. That sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's um, one of those that, like, it's, there's so many people that do it, but, so, like, I want, on one hand... There's not a lot of people that do it. I admit, it is kind of a hard job to get. I happen to get lucky. But um, but then on the other hand, there used to be like only a few websites that, you know, followed mobile technology. Now there's so many of them that there's just a ton. But um, what is your standard for a good camera on a smartphone? Does it have to be at least as good as the iPhone or better? Yeah, at least as good as the iPhone. What's your official job title? I'm the teen lifestyle editor because I review um, like mid-range, low-end phones and not only really feature phones anymore, but I used to. Just curious, but how come you didn't declare any winner from your recent dogfights? You know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, it just depends. You know, sometimes I, I like letting you guys decide which one you think is best. Okay, Jellybean voice search versus Siri. Um, I think both of them are kind of just novelty ideas, so I don't really know if either one is useful. I mean, the time it takes to pull it up, say something, wait for it to listen and respond, then find the right answer. I mean, I might as well just Google it, but I guess it takes the same amount of time, so, you know, who cares which one you do. So, yeah. Did that answer your question? <laughs> uh, when's the next Ultimate Fanboy War? We have one more minute, by the way, so I'll get just a couple more questions. Uh, the next Ultimate Fanboy War? I don't know. Uh, it just depends. You know, it's, um, it's fun. I like doing it. And I know you guys enjoy it, but um, hardly anybody volunteers. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, I always have everyone asking about it, but then when I actually do it, there's like six people that volunteer. Uh, there's like 10 or 15 people, and then half of them never respond. Um, and then I set an age limit. I was like, okay, you have to be at least 16. And then everyone who was under 16 got all mad about that. And I was like, well, the reason I did it is because... Last time I did an Ultimate Fanboy War, the people who I had the most trouble with getting back to me and scheduling everything and getting them ready for the show, they were the ones that were like, you know, 13, 14, 15, so that's why I said an age limit. And I was like, okay, fine, you're all mad about it, I'll make a concession for one person, and then lo and behold, that's the one person that gave me trouble, so, um, no, I, I might do it again eventually, but I'm not really sure. Okay, one more question. Um, opinions on Aaron's unboxing fail on the Nexus 7. Y yeah, it was funny. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Um, 
Okay, so that's it. That's the show. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope it was. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I will uh, see you guys same time next week, 5 p.m. Eastern time on Ustream. Also, of course, I'm gonna be posting the recording of this on uh, YouTube. So if you missed it, you can watch that and check out the timeline because you can use that to kind of jump around and see which topics you wanted to want to hear about or want to watch or listen to. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.